Have you ever thought of the difference between farm-raised fish and wild-caught fish? Some consumers prefer either one because of their taste, nutritious values, and or the influence to the environment. Both sides have pros and cons. The key is to weigh the positive and negatives and make educated choices that you can live with and line up with your health needs and values. Wild fish are often healthier with less contamination from man-made toxins because they feed on a natural diet of smaller fish and algae. Yes, generally speaking, this is correct. However, considering today's marine environment, they might not be the safest choice anymore. Since their living condition is not fully controlled, being aware of where they were caught from is important to consider. They might have spent their life in an industrial area with some chemical or radioactive contamination. Migratory fish, such as tuna, live in a wide range and they might have been through such a contaminated water. This means even being caught in a clean water technically does not guarantee its safety. From the food chain point of view, larger fish that feed on the smaller fish gradually concentrate the harmful substances like mercury in their body. Farm-raised fish, on the other hand, can have more contamination from toxic industrial chemicals such as PVCs and dioxins. They are often raised in crowded conditions and contain higher rates of bacteria, pesticides, artificial coloring, and antibiotics. Do these facts scary and make it difficult to choose what to eat? Well, the good news is that Many farmed fish are now grown in a way that is better for the environment and healthier for us. Improvement on the aquaculture technology is closing the gap between the quality of farmed fish and that of wild fish. However, when it comes to using raw fish for sushi and sashimi, the difference between farmed and wild is still important to consider, since the taste and the texture could be like a totally different fish. Farmed raised fish that spend most of their lifetime in a closed cage have usually fatty meat and the texture is softer. It's just like humans that don't exercise a lot. Conversely, wild fish have more tight meat. The muscle could be harder with much chewy sinews, yet the inherent flavor of the fish is clear and richer. In some particular fishing ports, the brand value can be greater, and the fish are traded as luxury products. The first auction that takes place at Tsukiji Market, Tokyo, makes headlines every year, and the highest winning bid for the wild bluefin tuna sometimes reaches over $1 million. The exception can be set for a salmon. Wild salmon is more likely to contain parasites, therefore, Unless you freeze it once before prepping, it shouldn't be used for sashimi. For other kinds of fish that have some risk of parasites, you want to utilize the technique such as pickling with vinegar, searing the surface, or making decorative cuts on the skin, while the fish remains unfrozen and fresh. Each fish has a different method of proper preparation to make the most of its flavor. Also, please wait for another video explaining about the difference between fresh fish and frozen ones more in detail. In any ways, it depends on which flavor and texture of fish meat you prefer though. Familiarizing yourself with the distinction and origin of the fish gives you more chance to enjoy the difference of the tastes. One last thing, we currently still have some choices left about what to eat. However. Along with the growing numbers of populations, and because of the growing demand for fish and the potential for our oceans to become depleted, in the future it sounds inevitable that we will all be eating more farmed fish. But this might also worth noting. Some research results tell that the farm raising process requires tons of small wild fish to be fed on the larger farmed fish which makes this industry rather inefficient way to use the limited resources. People working in this field are getting aware of this ironic fact and trying to create the alternative methods. There is always a conflict between the costs and the sustainability. 
while the future progress of technology is expected, it is meaningful to be aware of each pros and cons and its impact on the environment and the quality of your life.